Uh, it's not a Chuck E. Cheese movie. It is a video game adaptation. Ugh. Brunch! Hit it, boys! Episodes a little later than usual, by a day, but we've got crazy weeks seeing the boss tonight. Pete's doing, Pete's playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. No, I'm playing golf, but I am in on Dungeons no, and Dragons. No, but you're not what you're doing like immediately. You're podcasting, I suppose, but you are in. No, I know. I, I'm not. You, how stupid do you think I am? I know that you're talking about what we're doing tomorrow because I know you're not seeing the boss right now as we're recording this. You don't know that. I have two screens <laughs> open right now. <laughs> you don't think that I could be watching a Bruce Springsteen concert on YouTube while podcasting? If so, we got to re- You have evaluate. all your clothes on. So this I'm. whole thing. Shout out. You have all I your clothes on. I don't think you're listening to Bruce Springsteen because I, from what I've known over the past couple weeks, boy, you're, you're age for that guy. Um, I, I don't know how H I am. I'm just glad and excited to be doing it. Got some primo seats because it, it, it's not just about the boss, man. It's about, I mean, you get to see, you get to see Steven Van Zandt. That's awesome. What if he does a little, a little sill? You think he ever you're, does that during shows? I've never seen him before. So who knows? I mean, I know. I was just going to say, you're like mansplaining seeing Bruce Springsteen to me when I've, I'm famously the guy on this podcast for one more day. Who is the guy who's seen Bruce Springsteen? Do you know who uh, Max Weinberg is? Uh, no, but that sounds very familiar. Max Weinberg and the Max Weinberg 7 Max. Conan! He was uh, the uh, house band leader for Conan O'Brien. Okay. But he's okay. the drummer of the E Street Band. So it's just a big oh. collection. You see all these people. Roy Bitten. You get, like, all these. It's going to be a, a, a cool time. But uh, people wanted to know uh, what uh, the thoughts on the Jason Aldean leg situation. Because neither Pete has not tweeted about it. I've not tweeted about it. We've both really uh, bitten our tongues on on this. Uh, they, they're calling us the professor, Roy Bitten, the way we're biting our tongues on this. Pete, his legs are small. <laughs> his legs i mean they're there are small legs and trust me I've, I've gotten my fair share of like oh skinny legs comments because for years i just didn't do legs no, no time for it whatever Who cares yeah but when i say that those legs do not make sense those legs don't make sense i don't understand how this guy stands up <laughs> i don't understand how they support his upper body his upper body like He's not a he's not a skinny guy. He's like a beer he's drinking like American. A hefty, he's yeah. like a hefty upper body kind of guy. And those are legitimately like some of the skinniest legs I've ever seen. I, I'm a, I'm assuming that the jeans aren't doing them any favors with the, them being like boot cut. They come Ooh, in flared. and sort of, he's got like like hourglass jeans. But man, like those things, those things look like pipe cleaners. Yeah, no good trash legs and. I know there's a thing like, oh, skip leg day or whatever. I don't know what his workout regimen is, I, but I would think just, I don't by, think he's working out. just by doing anything normal, your, <laughs> your legs just – I feel like you have to do something to have legs that skinny. Exactly. Somebody said in my comments, and this is like a, a tough comment, but like it was like he looks like he has like wheelchair legs where he Ugh. they just haven't been used. What, what's, where, the, like, what's the thing of like you can't uh, – like unless you're – lifting and targeting like biceps or triceps or whatever but typically with like with cardio i believe you can't really uh, for lack of a better term spot treat areas so you can't say like right oh man like uh, i i wish my whatever was stronger it's like well then just fucking work out and your whole body is gonna <laughs> do it okay it's yeah, like it, he did it, something that where he was like how can i make my calves just go away it's crazy. And like, like I said, he's got a bigger upper body. And by just by walking around and supporting that all day, you would think that his legs would be more proportionate. And I've never had this thought before in my life, but I would really want to see Jason Aldean naked now Good. because he's got to have the weirdest body ever, ever. You should tweet. He takes these pants off. W I D. I mean, like, just and I don't know the answer pure, to that. 
pure cor- curiosity, I want to see what that guy looks like naked. Nice legs. Where it just the rest doesn't of make sense. I've never seen anything like it. Man. You know, I, I also need him to turn around. Why? Because I need to see what he's what he's mm. got in the trunk. Mm. Because probably nothing great. Presumably not a lot. <laughs> he's got to have Hank Hill ass. <laughs> more like uh, more like try that in a smaller size. <laughs> uh, there's been a lot of those jokes made. Saw the quote tweets. It's a lot oh. of like try leg day in a small town or try roasted. Tr- try smaller pants in a small town. Uh. Man, oh man! But I, I do want to hit. You, God bless him. You mentioned uh, golfing. How many times have you golfed this summer? Because I feel like your number is up from zero a year to double digits at least. I was, I was uh, like, I was usually like one or two times a summer guy. Um, I don't know how many times. Probably around like eight. Wow! Uh, this summer you'll get there. Then. But that's a but that's yeah. a that's a marked change. Yeah. Well, I also joined a country club, which helps. Uh, and I like have to play 36 holes a month basically, um, to get, to get my money, my money's worth and break even. So, uh, yeah, it's like forcing my hand. That's why I'm not going to Bruce. I got about a week left in this month and I got to play 36 holes. So I'm, I'm, I got to chip away at it. I have to podcast at you. I'm not telling you how to spend your money or anything. You know that sounds ridiculous. Like I didn't know this until you yeah, said no, it because no. you, you'd said I have to golf, and I was like, "Oh yeah, he has to golf. He's he made plans to golf." I didn't I did know, make like, plans to golf. You have to golf, or else when you show up, is it? It's also kind of a social thing because you don't want to yeah. be the Johnny Come Lately guy who's not who's showing up once a month. They're like, "Oh, this guy thinks he's better than us. Think like, he doesn't have to put in his thirty six like the rest of us." Is that the vibe? No, it's no, it's like, you know, they would just be like, wow, this guy never, sh- never shows up. And I have a buddy who like barely plays at that club, but it's like, you're just fucking dumping your money. If you don't, that's what I do so, with subscriptions. Every time I yeah, use I Showtime, they're like, oh, look at this guy. He thinks he's so cool. He's got $10 <laughs> to burn every month. Yeah, that's that's me with Paramount Plus. They're sitting around you at the wa- Paramount Plus offices and they're like, oh. this, guy on- this guy watched Mission Impossible movies for one week and he's been subscribed for four months. What a dumbass. No, I mean, like, but that's like eight dollars a month. So, you know, I also I also very much want to play golf and I miss playing golf, which is a crazy thing for me to hear come out of my own mouth because I was just like a big like one or two times a year guy and set it and forget it. Uh, but I'm getting better and now, uh, I've gone about three weeks without playing golf and, uh, I'm upset about it. So I want to play. Wow. This is the only day I can play this week. That's a long time. Every time I golf, man, I, and I, I golf now, I used to be like two, three times a year. Now I'm a zero to one time a year guy. Mm -hmm. I am better than the average person who never golfs like i'm not embarrassed for somebody who will go literal years without golfing yeah. like i i almost kind of want to be worse because i then i think i'm like i could probably be like a bad go- like a in a good way like a bad golfer if i golf yeah. regularly because i'm not an yeah, asshole yeah. golfer when i never golf imagine my ceiling so i i mean like i i i'm in the same i was in the same boat with you like when i would play once or twice a year i wouldn't be like embarrassed at how bad i was i could hang Mm. uh and i was just like it's just isn't really my thing so i don't really need to i used to be on the golf team in high school whoa i didn't know that yeah yeah so like i've got enough of like a skill set where i could play once or twice a year and like just hang um but and that was good enough for me for a while, but I don't know for for some reason maybe it's a social aspect that like a bunch of my friends joined this country club, so now I was like, like go- golf is such a social thing for me. Like I don't do it to like be competitive or to be amazing or like be a, whatever. Like I only do it to hang out with people, and so much of like what I just use my free time on now is just to hang out with my friends. Yeah, and and so like I've been enjoying that, and that's probably why. I, like that's 90 percent of my enjoyment of golf but like i'm i'm getting kind of into it and i have like fomo now that i haven't played in three weeks and my friends are all playing without me so like i, I want to get back out there we are reviewing strays the 2023 american comedy on this episode but first 
I got to tell you about a run in I had with the law. Oh, okay. I went to leave my home and a car was blocking my driveway. I was like, what the hell is this now? With the help of a stranger, they helped me squeeze out. I come back the same way, just barely squeezing in. But this car is straight up blocking my driveway. As I'm is go- it the same car that was almost same, blocking same, your uh, no same situation? No, no. But but this is a uh, because last like last week or two weeks ago, I pulled into your driveway and I was like, brother, I don't think I'm gonna make. Oh this. no no no, this wasn't even close. That was more like in infrin- That was more like an inconsiderate parking job. This okay. was like a straight up like way over blocking the driveway so i get out of my okay. car and uh, a cop is just pulling over and he's like hey is that your car no do you know whose it is no all right so i go inside live my life about 20 minutes later the cop comes back rings the doorbell he's like hey so you don't know whose car that is i don't maybe it's a neighbor or something and he's like buddy i went around no one's claiming this car so you want me to get a toad and i said no and what (laughs) yeah uh just out it was like a weird you know like when it's your turn to order and you've you've been fucking goofing around with your friends and you haven't looked at the menu and you're just like kind of stall and say something stupid I yeah. was like, uh, no. You panic ordered. You panic ordered a no on towing somebody else's car. <laughs> yeah, and he, the cop was like, "What?" Sure? And I was <laughs> like, "I gotta think that person parked like that out of ignorance because that's like a Hall of Fame bad parking job. Like, there's no way somebody intentionally. Maybe they didn't think there was a driveway there. Maybe they were confused. I, and I mean, like, I I get it, and and. You know, you know that if you say yes to that question, you're fucking up somebody's day. Right. Like that is that is a tough, tough thing to do. You come back and your car is towed. You're having a bad day. It was also tell pouring you what, rain. You, you, you maybe get one time inconveniencing me in my own driveway. Two times, I am saying yes quite quickly. So, I mean, unbelievable that that cop did not call me a pussy because <laughs> I told my friends about it. And I was like, is it normal that I said no? Or is the cop going to like write me a ticket with the P word on it? And they were like, the cop is probably going to roast you on that ticket. We didn't talk about this in the strays review, but one of the parts that I did enjoy was that the biggest dog in the movie, like everybody just kept calling him a pussy, like all the little dogs, which I thought I, I thought that was kind of kind of cute because do- little dogs always challenge big dogs. I was going to say that's very. This accurate. big dog is a big pussy. One thing that that movie had going for it, and when you listen to the review, you'll you'll be intrigued or. Uh, Maybe maybe challenged to count many things it had going for it, but one thing it did it did have little like canine accuracies. Which if you're like yeah, a you, dog you know head, that, you're gonna watch. You know that. that the person who wrote that movie had a dog and yeah. had been around dogs for a while, and I and just had and I know never that been a around fact. a joke before. <laughs> and I know that for a fact because I know the I know the person who wrote that movie, <laughs> which makes our scathing review of it all the more damning. Well. All's well that ends well, because eventually that car was gone. I don't think it got towed. I think the person came back and said, look at God and got in their car. Or maybe they didn't know. They probably didn't know that any of this happened at all. And they were just like, probably not. They were probably like, oh, cool. My car's nailed this parking job as usual. (laughs) Let's get out of here. My car right where I left it, like always. But. Yeah, I don't feel terrible about the no call because everything ended up being fine. Like my, I didn't end up going back out that that night, so this person didn't get towed. I didn't get inconvenienced. Yeah, I, mean, I the guess time. I guess saying wins. no like does doesn't further affect you based off the fact that you didn't have to go anywhere again. But like, damn, I probably would have said yes just based off of the annoyances that he already caused he or she. I'll tell you, nice cop. That that cop could have been (laughs) really, really mean to me. Here's Strays. Brunch! 
Strays is a 2023 comedy film from director Josh Greenbaum. It stars Will Ferrell as a dog who gets abandoned by his owner and joins a pack of strays. Together, the canine quartet travels on a mission to find the owner and bite his penis. As of this recording, it has a 55 on Rotten Tomatoes. Strays is one hour and 33 minutes long and is a terrible movie. It is bad. It's, it's bad. bad. Movie, brother. It takes a lot for us to be like, this is a bad movie. I don't know how many times we've ever said that when sitting down to review a movie where we're both like, this movie is bad. Two but guess what? Down. This movie stinks. It stinks. It's not funny. It is lowest common denominator humor. But even yeah. then, I was in a theater with two other people who had a dog. Shout out making it a family event and like strays. Did they bring their dog? Dog is check. Yes, no, it was not a stray dog that was in the theater. It, uh, a couple... What theater allows you to bring a dog in there? I would assume tons of theaters do. It's, it's like a like I, I, you don't know Nervous why the dog? person had a dog. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, they they were howling, laughing okay. at everything, and I don't know if they were trying to maybe if like the dog. Uh, was having a rough time and they were trying to help him with his self-esteem and they were like hey look how funny dogs are look at that one that one sounds like jamie fox that one sounds yeah, like so, randall park who wasn't bad in this but it was still a no very bad no movie. yeah i mean so it, it's like it's, i like the premise of it the premise of it is so dumb and like over the top that i was like oh yeah i'm in and it builds itself as like a dark comedy and like a, a comedy for not necessarily a dark, yeah. but a comedy for <laughs> adults. Too much credit. <laughs> a, a, a comedy for adults, but the real caveat there is it's only for adults if you're a sophomore in high school. Like that's what they consider an adult. Yeah, it. Ah, shit. What was I going to? Oh, that the concept of it is why I was so intrigued by it. I thought that it looked like a movie I would not enjoy, but its premise. And when I was telling people that I was going to see this movie, they were like, that looks horrible. And I was like, right, but I want to give money to somebody who executed a vision of a dog gets left by its owner. So with the help of other dogs, they decide they're going to bite his penis off and they'd make it. There's no like uh double entendre or like hidden messages there. They're like the movie is about they say, and it's right in the trailer. They're like, okay, let's find him and let's bite his penis. Hollywood made that movie. So yeah, I'm, I love that. I'm happy for outrageous things that that happened, but it was so, so not funny. Every joke yeah. was super obvious. Even like I said, the uh, Randall Park's character I liked and I liked Randall Park and I liked some of the casting choices. Like Will Ferrell as a dog, count me in. J Jamie Foxx as anything, count me in. Isla Fisher hadn't personally hadn't heard from her in a minute. Randall Park, like I, I loved this group, and Randall Park's character was fine, but like I feel like nobody in this movie could do anything without it being done in the most corny, obvious way possible. Yeah, none of it surprised me. Like in terms of like, there were a few jokes that I thought hit pretty pretty hard. Like there were a few laughs for me. But other, otherwise, like, this was humor for wine moms. This is humor for, like, the most boring suburban people that are just like, ha, ha, ha. Like, isn't this – like, it's just a – it was the lamest jokes. It, like you said, it was the lowest common denominator jokes. Like, they – they got drunk like 10 minutes into the movie. They did drugs 30 minutes later. Like, it's so stupid. Yeah, the, uh, the only thing – the only time that I laughed – was there's a scene in which they get taken to the kennel and as they're walking in it's like your classic entering prison everybody's yelling fresh meat doing that sort of thing and mm -hmm. one of the dogs in the kennel went yeah that, was pretty <laughs> funny. Yeah. that made me laugh out loud <laughs> and that was the only time in the entire movie that i laughed yes yeah, no there was um when they were at the state fair and the golden retriever was doing the narrator thing and then was like, oh, my owner's a serial killer, but nobody will listen to me. <laughs> I thought that one was pretty funny. Uh, and then uh, the bunny scene. I thought the bunny scene was kind of funny. <laughs> okay, so the narrator and the owner's a serial killer thing. Again, super it telegraphed. Like, I, I liked that. Yeah, it I, wasn't executed well. I like, liked super well. that they did 
give a little nod and a wink to the trope of doing a talking animal movie that like, hey, it could be worse. It could be this type of talking animal movie. And then, yeah, the owner who's being cutesy with the girl is going to kill her. Uh, I, what I'll give them, and I mean, we can just jump right into the positives and negatives if we want, because I don't know how much there is to say about this movie other than it sucks. The biggest positive I'll give it is it does deliver on its promise. And not that, yeah. spoiler yeah. alert, not that it bites the penis. We knew it was going to bite the penis. But, by the way, bite the penis has to be the new jumping the shark. It means <laughs> when you're promising something and you you make good on it. Yes. I thought the scene of the biting the penis and the presentation was, I was like, you know what? Very good. Good. Very good. You, you yeah. executed that well. And you know what? If that, if it were just a gross, stupid thing, the other positive I'll give it is it's not as gross as it could have been. It was very gross in certain points, but it was not sausage party. Like that. And that's my third positive. It's not sausage party, which is the lowest bar I could give it. I didn't think it was going to be particularly funny. I meant to bring up on the regular podcast a discussion about do we think this movie has a chance of being funny or is it just going to be Sausage Party? The answer is no and no. Not funny, not Sausage Party. Well, well, I think like the the better question is do we think the, that people are going to consider this movie funny? And I uh -oh. think the answer is yes. And I think that the Rotten Tomatoes score gives you an indication like 55% is way higher than I expected this to come in at. And that's from critics who are typically pretty tough on, on comedies. Like we've seen comedies that we've really liked and they've been in the twenties and thirties. <laughs> and this movie's got 55%, which is crazy to me. And that makes me think that a lot of people are going to find this funny. But again, like I, I really think it's going to be like a litmus test for me to like, like, how funny are you? Like, what is your level of humor that you find this movie funny and you're, like, over 16 years old? Buddy, it's got an audience score of 71. That Yeah, so, like, I'm I'm not shocked that, like, I guess I guess I'm not shocked that the audience score is is higher considering it's 55 as critics. So, uh, one of, like, the big negatives for me was that, like, the, the movie that, like, or I guess like the world that this movie takes place in didn't make any sense to me. Like, I don't know if that's like the biggest problem to have here, but like, I don't know how far they traveled. Like it's, they have like so many things that, that come up where like these dogs got home in essentially, it seemed like a day, but it took three hours to drive. Like none of this really makes sense logistically. And then all they had to do was yell in the woods to get people that they met like 45 minutes earlier in the movie to just run over to them. None of this made sense from like a geographical standpoint for me. And it really bothered me. Geographically insincere. Or yes. uh, insane. Geographically insane. Leaves the leaves the viewer geographically skeptical. <laughs> Yes, that's its biggest negative. I mean, the the one that just has to be there is that it's not funny. Yeah, obvious, oh, yeah. stupid. What like we we can low put hanging fruit, it, right? Uh, but again, I will give its positive that it's not sausage party. What do you give it on Letterboxd? Um, I on the way home, I was thinking about it. I'm either between a one and a half and a two. I'm I'm leaning closer to one and a half. Oh wow! Again, you're the guy who likes Letterboxd. I am bad at it. I was going to say, and we were in lockstep this conversation. I was like, do I go zero? Do stars. I go half a star or do I go zero? Yeah, I guess I go yeah. half a star. I mean, it takes a lot for me to go like one star. And I don't know if I've ever given half a star, maybe hypnotic if I go back and look. But like, you have to be a real piece of shit. And I don't consider this to be the worst movie of the year. I think it's very bad. But him, Hypnotic is a much bigger waste of time because that movie took itself seriously and was awful. At least this one was like, it's a. we know that this is a dumb movie. It's like the SATs. You get a certain amount of letter uh, score for writing your name. You put Bill Fickner yeah. in the movie. You're starting at one and a half stars, baby. Okay, <laughs> I'll give this then. I'll give this one star then. Okay. I hate to wear. That's, that's uh, got to be the lowest cumul cumulative that we've had. I mean, 
it was a bad. I don't know about you. I personally, I thought it was a bad movie. So I think that it's uh, okay if I mean something's got to be the lowest. And this was, as fruit goes, low hanging. Not just not a a, a great movie. Uh, check out our other reviews where we discuss movies that we definitely liked more on our YouTube page. Subscribe, like, do whatever you'd like, and obviously check out our podcast brunch on Spotify and wherever you get them. Did you see when you went to Strays that Blumhouse is making a Chuck E. Cheese movie? Uh, it's not a Chuck E. Cheese movie. It is a video game adaptation. Ugh. Five Nights at Freddy's is a video game adaptation of a horror video game that is quite popular. But I'll tell you what, that movie looks way better than it has any business being. Oh, I'm going to be into that movie. Yeah, for sure. Like, that movie looks very campy, very creepy. And yeah, like I, I was thinking that while watching the the trailer today, I was like, okay, if you don't know that this is a video game, you have to think that this movie is like a satire of Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, but I was, I'm into it. Uh, remember in uh, in Role Models when they go to like the Chuck E. Cheese type place and the animatronic things are dancing and they're like, we are the the, the Chipmunk Band or whatever, and the kid jumps up on the table. And he goes, we are the butt suck ass butt Chipmunk. We butt we suck butt but. And uh, the adults are really mad at him. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> this adult was like, go off, King. <laughs> Role Models rock. That the movie best. is so funny. <laughs> it's in that, I don't know, eight year run of raunchy really? comedies. That's right fucking up there, man. Like, I'll tell you yeah. what, when we did old school tomato fights, uh, I'm going to reference that in a second. Uh, when we did uh, old school for tomato fights, my big thing was like, I dreaded potentially finding out old school wasn't that funny because I remembered it being the funniest movie and I watched mm -hmm. it and I was like, it's still funny in spots, but you right. It's, it's not the funniest movie ever. I bet if I watch role models today, I'm like confirmed the funniest movie. I think that like, because the universe always evens out, I, I we're, we gotta be due for like a, an incredible run of, raunchy comedies coming up at some point somebody said this it, recently was it you was it uh it, was, it may have been me after um after uh the jennifer lawrence movie came out I, the yeah it could the have been hard you. r movie it could have that been we shouldn't call hard r, the hard r, hard r movie but like people were talking about like how they just don't make movies like that anymore and i was like i feel like it, this is we're coming into a time where those movies are gonna make a comeback because because of like cancel culture and how sensitive and how like aware everybody was of like not offending anybody for so long. I do think there's going to be like a correction back the other way. And like those offensive and raunchy movies are going to make a comeback. Uh, I think so too. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if we ever got a chance to talk about it. I saw Burt Kreischer's movie when it came yeah, the out machine. and that yeah. wasn't that bad a movie. That was like, a stupid, funny, ridiculous comedy movie. And I said this when I saw Bros. I'll say it when I saw the Burt Kreischer movie. Like, look, is it the greatest movie in the world? No, but it's fucking adults swearing at each other. Yeah. Give me that. And if you don't. It's very funny that it was, that was your reaction to Bros. Oh, it was. I know. Right. I look, famously, nobody saw Bro's it. Bros. So stupid. No, but like, it was a funny movie. Yeah, nobody saw it. And it got a little. The country music thing was horrible, but like the funniest elements of that movie was when it was being one of those movies, like the ridiculous hookups, fucking swearing, the 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 Rangers fan dude that he bangs, like all that. I was like, yeah, and I know that it's like groundbreaking and that it was gay, but I was like, I miss this shit, and it's one of the things right. I liked about Trainwreck, which was not a bad movie. Especially when you're going into a comedy, like it's just j adjusting your expectations and like you just want the shit and the jokes to be funny and you want the interactions to be funny. Everything other than that is just a fucking bonus. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, bros and gays, I made my first trip to P-Town uh, last ah, weekend. How was that? It was uh, it was it was nice. Like it was a nice little spot. A lot of gay people, mm -hmm. which fully expected, but like I could definitely understand why everybody loves going there. It just seems like an awesome vibe. It's funny. I was in a gunkwit over the weekend. 
Oh, look at that. We are conquering the gay cities in two states. Yeah. I love me. I don't want to tip my hand too much. Uh, big Agunquit guy. Love it. Yeah. Agunquit's really nice. I feel like it's like uh, York gets gets a lot of like the 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 highlights. The of, shine. Of or the, I, so that, I don't, yeah, the shine. I, I don't, don't know the that. answer to that. I, I don't know if that's true or not. When I grew up, I, York was just the thing that was next to Agunquit. And we loved going yeah, to Agunquit. And oh no, it was no, that was the opposite for me. Like, Ogunquit was just the place next to York, so maybe we uh, just have like weird framing. Yeah, but, like, no, maybe I, the listeners can can answer this question. It's like, what what has more like brand appeal, York? I but I feel like it's got to be York because there's York Beach, where there's a Gunquit Beach, right? But I that's not really like a that doesn't really like I don't see that name up in flashing lights. So I think that. York is more of like the city and a gunquit is more of the town, although okay. it's Maine. So we're really split. Like a gun- a gunquit has like the better restaurants, like better nightlife. Yeah. A gunquit kind of is the nightlife, but it's small and it's still quaint. There's yeah. best of both worlds. I love it. Yeah. That's all I need. Shout out, uh, shout out food for thought. I Love that place. They're a fucking weirdo restaurant that is that just takes some swings, makes kind of out there stuff, but out there stuff for simpletons like me. And it's it, it rocks. Um, what, there was an underwear party that I missed in uh, in P Town under there every Thursday. There's an underwear party. I think they have it under there. Yeah, under the sea. Under the sea. You know, it's a great <laughs> baseball thing. What? You know what, like, the big rule is with umpires? Nobody does transitions like Do you us. know this? Do you know this? Well, we're doing it remote, so I just literally have my notes right in front of me. And yeah. I was like, all right, done talking about that. Um, you, you know what, like, the big rule Very is? Very homophobic of you. You were like, all right, no more get, talk about gay people. Let's talk about baseball. <laughs> Why can't baseball people be gay? That's true. Good Hater. point. Uh, okay. Uh, you know what the big rule is with umpires? Uh, they got to be wrong. You're not allowed to. What aren't you allowed to do with umpires? You're not allowed to touch them. Well, yeah, unless it's after hours. But during the game, the big rule. I was thinking about this today, randomly. Oh, because a guy got tossed out of a game. Um, yeah, Alex Cora. You're not allowed to argue balls and strikes with the umpire. Do you know what the umpire's job is? Call balls and strikes. Like, that's the most incredible deal. That should be the number deal. one thing that you get to. Yeah, yeah, right. Umpires <laughs> have the best deal in the world. You do what you want. And if somebody says, hey, what did you do? You get to say, that's it. You don't get to be here anymore. Kick them right. That is. It Call is, a Trump it is, voice. Like, bah, get, like when they're tossing somebody out of one of his rallies. Insane. Yeah, what I a mean. Rule. What do they call – wow, this is like a crazy brain fart I'm going through right now. What do they call it when – oh, it's a dictatorship. Yeah. Uh, like it is America's pastime, but it is the sport that most embraces a dictatorship. It's like, Where it's just one guy who gets to be like, oh, that ball that was thrown into the, the stands? Yeah, that's a strike. And then if anybody dares dares protest, he just gets to fucking throw him out of his country. <laughs> if I were an umpire – I would fuck up the first like four pitches in a row on like, purpose do about it? and to just like, look, just be like ball. <laughs> Did you say something? <laughs> yeah. It's called establishing ball. dominance. <laughs> hey, all right, let's continue. My ball. question about re- regarding umpires is whether or not they've, be- they've always been this bad. Like, have they always been this bad, or is, or is it just that now we get to post a video every time there's an egregious, like bad bad call, and complain about it? I miss before. One. I bet you we. I bet we missed tons of horrible strike calls or ball calls, and we just never saw them because nobody posted them on the internet and was like, "What the fuck is this guy doing?" My favorite rule was when if you posted something from baseball on the internet baseball that's true would say that's it get off the internet because quite frankly <laughs> i had a better time on the internet 
<laughs> now I go on the point. internet. I'm like, oh, what's this? People forget what people forget that the last people to accept the internet was everybody associated with baseball. That was super. Like cool. there was a time where Major League Baseball didn't have a YouTube channel or any content on YouTube, and it was like 2014. What was the what was the MLB like media thing? They had this like media arm, not MLB TV, yeah, MLB, MLB advanced media. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, like ML BAM or whatever people would call it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was the like, Hey, it's advanced. It's so far behind. And then the NHL <laughs> one time was like, Hey, we got a huge announcement. This is going to knock your socks off. And they were like, we're letting MLB advanced media call the shots. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> You're the cool. Well, like, what would have happened to you in the early days if it was like baseball, and you I just wouldn't had exist to, to tweet like, "I like that goal too," just like the rest of us. <laughs> were like, "I liked that goal." Just imagine I agree. In your head. <laughs> or you just had to tweet what happened. Yeah, yeah, it would be like, um, like the you know how Twitter allows you to do the the alternate descriptions of images. Mm -hmm. You would just have to describe a goal in tweet form. You'd be like, yeah, Jack Eichel went from forehand to backhand and he placed it above the goalie's right shoulder. And what a, what a sick goal. Please, RT. <laughs> Please, RT. I am being helpful. That was good. His team won. RT me. Follow. Where are y'all sitting? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Where are y'all sitting? Got to bring that back. I want to start a thing. Uh, in the my cover in hockey days there was like are you going to the game and every day just tweet like morning hockey fans are you going to the game and then retweet everybody who's like i'm going to the fucking game because hockey twitter was still kind of weird and fun and friendly enough back then that people would have done it and they would have like happily like bragged for a retweet because that used to be currency They'd be like, I got a fucking retweet from the are you going to the game guy. Why? Because I told him I'm going to the game. And here's the best part. I'm not even going to the game. Got that <laughs> RT though, baby. I mean, that's essentially how Bucci Overtime Challenge became a thing. Is like it just it thrived off people just wanting a retweet so bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, think about it. That's I know he has like merch and stuff, but people didn't do it for the merch. They did it for the retweet. How do we dress up the because there are people I remember like half the like half the t time when like somebody would get something right on the Bucci overtime thing, they would either get retweeted or they would get retweeted by Bucci complaining that they didn't get retweeted by Bucci. Oh, yeah. It would be like, I got it. You didn't even retweet me. And yeah. he'd retweet it. Uh, I do have to ask you something. Speaking of things I saw online today, I saw a clip from somebody saying, like, did you know that there used to be a music festival? There was all women artists and it was called the Lilith Fair and it was blowing people's minds, including like people I know who are younger than me. And uh, I feel like I'm throwing more shade at the person who posted the video than anybody mm -hmm. else. D did you know about Lilith, Lilith Fair? The Lilith Fair? Yeah. No, I did not know that. This is ma Oh, that's OK. So I feel less I, I feel less judgmental then. Just because now yeah, there's no two idea. People. I'd never heard that in my life. Oh, it was this huge, huge, huge popular festival. Sarah McLaughlin. Uh, it was uh, Indigo Girls, Tracy Chapman. Just like anybody who is anybody. If you were a chick you know and you were Indigo rocking Girls. it. Indigo Girls is Justin Vernon's favorite band. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, you know that... Uh, I was going to make a joke, but it there was, was only the Lilith Fair named after uh, Lilith from Cheers. Yes. Oh, cool. They invented that name for Cheers. <laughs> but what, what, uh, her ex, her ex husband is now getting a his own spinoff. Whoa. What's it called? Frasier. Wow. They're when's it on? It's it's coming out. They just released the first uh, the first images from the Frasier reboot. Mm -hmm. And boy, it. I'm not, oh, I'm not really? excited about it. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. Watch Becker. That is the best I know. spin off. I've just been watching a lot of the first 48. 
It's pretty dark. <laughs> What's the first 48? You don't know the first 48? I remember it's, people uh, talking about it, but it seems like it's not new. It's not new. It's definitely not new. Um, it is a a reality TV show in which they follow homicide units in the first 48 hours after murders. I thought you were going to say in the first 48 states. <laughs> Sorry. That would be, that would be incredible. <laughs> Although, I... That could be true because I have not seen them follow a homicide unit in Hawaii or Alaska. You know what's so fucking sad? I just Googled what are the 49th and 50th oh my states. No, no, if, if you were, if, if I, so I said 48, just like it was a throwaway number. If you had said like, hey, the, these two thing, these two states are a thing, I immediately would have been like, oh, Hawaii and Alaska. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I, I thought maybe I was going to get like, fucking like south carolina took a long time north well i carolina mean yeah was I mean, there forever but it took a while for us to get south carolina if you were to ask me what the 47th state was let's get that or or no i guess the 48th who what was the 48th state in the united states uh, no idea i would i would assume that it went from 13 to 48 right oh this rocks what a fun game this is you're never did it go gonna from thir- did it go from 13 to 48 uh, like, like did, was it class? was it like yeah like no. NHL expansion no no um was it although the the original three <laughs> was Delaware Pennsylvania New Jersey mm-hmm. and then that that huge batch to to round out the oh the, man this is gonna make people so mad who are like you, actually smart listening to this well, whatever, conversation you fucking idiots didn't know what the little affair was so we all have <laughs> things that we know and things that we, yeah, we all have our blind spots i guess i mean like logically i th- i feel like it would be new mexico because new mexico is like the 47th oh damn yeah i am stunned that this one took this long but it's also got like a it's got a a newcomer vibe to it like i I feel it can't be it's also a northern kind of like New Mexico, <laughs> Arizona. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I mean, I was gonna say it can't be like a northern state because man, that line is pretty straight. <laughs> like, yeah. It would be incredible if if Canada like cucked us on a territory. They were like, no, you can't have like Washington. That's why it would be so funny if like South Carolina was like, yeah, that was there for a while, <laughs> and like yeah. North Carolina. You know, since this all happened in like 1912, it's it's hard to to remember because it seems like it was so long ago anyway. But yeah, until 1912, there was just a lot of redirecting traffic around North Carolina. You know, Make sure sucks. you don't go through this. North Carolina, you bring stupid. your passport. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna drive down this road, you better have your fucking passport, pal. Uh, how about this? Can you get the only other state that joined in the 1900s. So we've gotten Alaska and Hawaii. I famously took care of that. You're welcome. <laughs> Arizona, New Mexico. There's one more. 46 happened November 16th, 1907. I'm gonna also going to check to see if there's any uh, state joining <laughs> anniversaries today. That should be a brunch thing. <laughs> uh, happy birthday to this state uh happy anniversary would more be map. america and florida tying the knot on this day <laughs> um oh shit hawaii was august 21st oh we just happy belated missouri was happy august 10th 1821 happy belated to missouri and uh new york july 26th it's pushing it uh, I'm going to say Florida. Ooh, Florida. Florida was one of the original 27. Okay. How about, how about California? California no, that can't be right. This is the best segment we've had in <laughs> decades. That can't be right. I feel like cause, because everybody was going to California for like the gold. California was in the original 31. September 9th, 1850. Um. Fuck. Uh, Louisiana. Yo, Louisiana was well early. Louisiana was eighteen twelve. My brother, that was the eighteenth right. state. What is it? What is it? 
Oh, this is crazy. If you go to Google Maps and you zoom in on the United States, it zooms in from like an angle because it wants to remind you that the Earth is round and it's not flat. Okay, Google Maps. Uh, <laughs> Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. Where is Oklahoma located? In that area. I don't see it. It's I don't like even, I'm looking at a map and, and I don't know where it is. US, I think it's up and to the right of New Mexico or just to the right up above. Oh, Texas. yeah. It's right above Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was just a big hole in the United States or did was it a did they own that territory and it just wasn't recognized as a separate state? It's funny you should ask that. How the, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> good segment i can't i can't imagine i can't imagine the united states just having a big old hole in the middle of it and just being like hey, you gotta go around you know what's nuts that for so long before december 11th 1816 we didn't even have indiana what do you think that time indiana? was like when we didn't I have mean, indiana it's like damn this country's the feeling a little weird today <laughs> yes like i can't help but can't help but feel like there's just like this hole in my soul wait what could it be is there a territory we yeah, there's so many so many other people just looking at the united states being like i can fix him and the way that they fix him is by acquiring indiana it's the scene. it's like the last piece of like a championship team it's the scene in 500 days of summer where she puts out her arm and she's like, show me, because I need a tattoo. And Tom is like, well, this is, this is how USA would look if it were optimized. What's that? That's Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, this just we looks should... like the, the regular United States. No, I added something. It would be, uh, it would be cool if, um, if like world leaders treated their, their countries and territories like uh like sports teams mm -hmm. like they just traded a big chunk of their land for like a first round pick or something in the nato draft i'm glad that didn't happen or like trump was president he would have <laughs> yeah that's smoked. a good point he would have traded <laughs> <The deals. laughs> he would have traded new hampshire for a fucking like for a fucking mars bar i mean that honestly might be a good trade oh uh, yeah new hampshire uh. I'll fuck with like the Wikisaki. only the only purpose that New Hampshire serves to me is providing a, a path to drive straight to Maine. Uh, you must love sales tax, then, bitch. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. What 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 sports team would Donald Trump run his country like? Oh boy, I. Uh, what sports team? Would... I'll tell you which one it wouldn't be. I mean, like. you'd want him to be an absolute Buffalo owner, Bills but... because they don't want him running their shit. <laughs> Yeah, you'd you'd want him to be an absentee owner. Be like, yeah, yeah. Just hire some. Well, we'll Pull do hands it. Off. Uh, all right. Last thing, got my fantasy football auction this weekend. Very excited. Uh, I've been blading a ton. Which, getting back to the legs conversation, I've been blading a ton, and my shirts are fitting a little better. And I'm like, damn. How come my smaller, my small jeans aren't fitting like they used to? It's because the thighs are coming back now. Because I'm just pumping that lower body. So oh, hell yeah. I can't get the Aldine legs. I was trying, but if rollerblading is your means of exercising, you're probably going to end up with some tree trunks. Yeah, and you want those. You want those tree trunks. Is that so? Anyway, uh, so... I've been sleeping better, taking better care of myself, but the auction is, I can't remember if we discussed this on the Adam Jones draft day tomato fights. Like that is our one day a year, our best shot of being happy. <laughs> and we all get together. We have so much fun. We cheat on our diets like crazy. It's just a lot of pizza, a lot of beer, a lot of snacks. And if that sounds sad, that's what life is uh but yeah no like we already went into this like yeah. the, the best thing in life about being an adult is just doing stuff with the boys oh it, it's fantastic uh so uh by the way my caption if i post anything from bruce springsteen is going to be uh 
can't spell the boys without the boss. <laughs> uh, anyway, Christ. so for the first time I've purchased, uh, because one of my friends is coming from the Cape and he's going to bring a ton of ice cream. Mm -hmm. So for the first time in my life, I have purchased lactate. Have you ever taken Ooh. lactate before? I have not. I've not. We all have a lactose intolerance, but I've never really felt the need. But just given I've been off pizza for a little bit and I'm going to be crushing pizza, doing a ton of ice cream. I even got one of the uh, I got the the ice cream canteen. I don't know if you know about this. It's like that. Uh, it's like that Yeti koozie thing, except it's for ice cream. It's crazy. Not, it's like I've 50 never bucks. heard of that. That rock. Yeah, I'm so pumped. I what a, I spent fifty dollars for one night of eating ice cream. Anyway, uh, so I'm looking at the lactate. Yeah, and it says for the prevention of gas, bloating, diarrhea, blah blah. blah enjoy dairy again. No discomfort. That's all the stuff it says on the front. And then on the bottom right, it reads: These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. <laughs> this product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I have known about lactate for a hundred years yeah same. probably because lactate has been around for a hundred years you have had a lot of time to get your statements approved there has to be some sort of statute of limitations for being able to slap the now this hasn't yet been approved by the food and drug administration who's running this company umpires right they exactly. can just say whatever they want can't push back on it <laughs> I uh, I have never taken lactate, but I've I've drank lactate, Whoa. which is a weird thing. But yeah, I've I've drank lactate, and it's not great. But like, I didn't get sick. Yeah, I mean, really, my goal. I don't care what happens, and I, I I've brought. <laughs> I don't care what happens to me. <laughs> put it on my tombstone. <laughs> oh God, fuck! I need to know when I die. I need to know <laughs> that that I'm about to die. Because wouldn't those be the best fucking last words? Put it on my tombstone? No, his last word. You know, last word. I was going to say the last words were, uh, I don't care what happens to me. But now it's got to be, I don't care what happens to me. Put it on my tombstone. <laughs> and then you put that on the person's tombstone. All right. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, there's... In the latest Batman movie, a literal line from Robert Pattinson's Batman is, I don't care what happens to me. <laughs> the other lines from that Batman movie are, is Batman still here? Yeah, he's just hanging out. <laughs> Whenever we want him, he's in, the, uh, he's in the waiting room with the criminals. This guy's got no fucking life. Loves stopping by the police station. He's got his uh, police radio scanner, and he just stops in, and he's like, hey, heard there was some trouble. Everything okay? I'm Batman, you see. And they're like, yep. We got it, pal. All good, Bruce. <laughs> you don't know I'm Bruce. Yeah, we do. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll be back in person next week. But don't forget what we said about Jason Aldean's legs. It's important. <laughs>